Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. As uh, we enjoy the holidays at, to close out uh, 2018 and uh, soon welcome in the new year, 2019, we've had wrenchingly incredible changes going on in the Arctic. So in this video and subsequent ones, I'm gonna discuss the Arctic report card, uh, which, was, which came out in early December, uh, 2018. So I'm going to talk about how these Arctic changes are profound and they're influencing weather and climate on the whole planet. And the changes are happening much, much faster than anybody has expected. Um, and things are obviously happening much faster than normal and we're going to a much um, less stable climate, a much more greatly destabilized climate. And this has huge implications to, to our entire planet, to everybody on our entire planet. So let me um, get started. So here we have the Arctic Report Card 2018. So how do you find this? Well, normally you can just Google Arctic Report Card 2018 and you get a whole bunch of government sites, including NOAA, National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration, but if you do that now, unfortunately, the website is not available. Government sites, not instead of just mothballing them and not adding anything new, which is very easy to do, they actually shut them all down, which is kind of absurd. So I went into Google and I tried Arctic Report Card 2018, mirror copy available during government shutdown. I got some sites, but once again, I wasn't able to access it. So... I went on to Twitter, you know, and social media and tried to access, you know, just ask people, you know, does anybody have a copy of the site? Thought maybe they would have downloaded it before the government shut down. And within minutes, um, Anthony on Twitter came and told me, hey, what about this? And he gave me this link. Now, this is the link, ftp colon slash slash ftp.org, etc. You can see the link there quite clearly. So if you just type in it exactly as you see appearing there, then you can access the Arctic report card during the government shutdown. So the basic headlines are that there's persistent Arctic warming is continuing to mount in 2018. Continued warming of the Arctic atmosphere and the ocean are driving broad change in predicted and also unexpected ways. New emerging threats are taking form and highlighting the level of uncertainty in the breadth of environmental change that is to come. Okay, so scrolling down to the highlights of this report here. Okay, um, and if you followed my videos in the past, you know most of these things, but I'm going to talk about some of the details. So surface air temperatures in the Arctic continue to warm at twice the rate relative to the rest of the globe. Okay, now they define the Arctic in this document as anything north of 60 degrees. So twice the rate, because we know, you know, it depends on the latitude. People define the Arctic in different ways. When it says twice the rate, it's actually more than twice the rate. Um, it's up to, you know, three to four to five times the rate if you go up into the high Arctic. In the past five years, so 2014 through 18, that's exceeded all previous records since 1900. So the warming in the Arctic is phenomenal, and we call this Arctic temperature amplification. And I'll talk about the reasons, I'll go into more detail um, as we continue. This first video is kind of an introductory video on the key points. So in the terrestrial system on land, the warming is driving broad long-term trends, and we're getting declining terrestrial snow cover this is happening mostly in the spring, and what it's doing is it's making the Arctic a lot darker. And the, the rate at which snow cover is declining in the spring months, it exceeds the rate that the sea ice is melting. And the effect on the albedo, or reflectivity, is just as significant as the sea ice. We all talk about sea ice decline causing being the result of and causing Arctic temperature amplification, but the snow cover is just as significant. Of course, 
Greenland is up there. The Greenland ice sheets, which have seven meters of sea level rise tied up in them, are rapidly getting darker and melting much more quickly. There's cascading at the edges of the ice shelf into the oceans. There's also a lot of melt underneath the oceans because these ice sheets are grounded quite often on bedrock that is below sea level. So the oceans are warming and that's significantly melting the ice from below. Also, this is happening in Antarctica. When you think about it, it's the main mechanism for ice loss on Antarctica. Lake ice. So there's many different lakes up in the north and this lake ice is rapidly melting out quicker. The, it's not forming later. Um, as we move into winter, it's forming much later. And in the spring, it's melting out much earlier. So the duration of open water over these lakes is, is ever increasing. The duration of ice on these lakes is decreasing. So we're getting a lot more discharge of water into the Arctic from rivers that flow into the Arctic. This is fresh water, of course. Also, the melt of sea ice is fresh water. So because of all the fresh water in the Arctic, come the autumn, when the temperature, air temperature goes below zero and you start getting the ocean freezing, the water is fresh and it can freeze at about zero degrees. If the water is very salty, at 35, 3.5% salt, which is typical in the, you know, the average for the ocean, then the, the water, you have to go to minus 1.8 Celsius for the water to freeze. So it's harder to form the ice. So one of the things that's happening is the salinity levels are dropping, or sorry, they're increasing in the Arctic because we're getting incursions of Pacific and Atlantic water. And that's causing, it makes it means it's more difficult to form sea ice come the freeze up. We're getting an expansion in terms of area and a greening of the Arctic tundra vegetation. There's more rainfall, less snowfall. There's more, you know, warmer temperatures as opposed to colder temperatures. So the tundra is thawing out. Instead of frozen ground, you have soils and you have the shrubs and things can grow up. And in fact, parts of the Arctic, we're getting forests appearing where it never used to be, you know, the vegetation used to be just a few inches maximum. And, you know, a decade later, we have forests with uh, six meter trees, you know, in parts of Siberia and stuff. Now, despite this increase in vegetation, you'd think this would be good for herd populations, grazers eating the herbs and grass of caribou and wild reindeer. But these populations have declined nearly 50% over the last two decades. So, Look, let's face it, Santa's going to have to move. Okay, the Arctic's a much warmer place. Okay, we're losing the reindeer. They're dropping off. Rudolph and his merry band of reindeer are in decline. So Santa, you know, we have no choice. Santa's got to move to Antarctica. Okay, and the idea of reindeer flying, you know, is a bit far-fetched. So I propose we move Santa to Antarctica and we use penguins to pull the sleigh instead of reindeer. At least penguins have wings. It's more believe, although they don't fly, it's more believable that penguins could pull the sleigh um, as opposed to uh, reindeer. Okay, so in 2018, the Arctic sea ice was younger, thinner, and covered less area than in the past. What else is new? 12 lowest extents in the satellite record have occurred in the last 12 years. There's less land fast sea ice. This is sea ice that grows and as it grows from the shore out, it attaches to the shorelines. It's very important because it's the, you know, it's what people, native peoples up in the Arctic, they travel out onto the sea ice to hunt for seal because the ice is attached to the shore, to the land. But in the last few decades, the ice is only going out half as far from the shore and it's much thinner and we're getting lots of snowmobiles going through the ice, etc. So hunting has to completely change for First Nations people up there. The sea surface temperatures are much, much higher. They're linked to regional variability. Um, the sea ice is retreating. 
rapidly. It doesn't exist in areas where it used to exist. There's air, warm air brought up because the jet streams are so curvy. There's advection, which is horizontal transport as opposed to convection, is vertical transport. Think hot air rises, that's convection. Advection is horizontal transport. So we're getting transport of water from the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans, the Pacific through the Bering Strait, the Atlantic up through um, the Atlantic Ocean, also connecting to the Arctic via, you know, around the Svalbard area, etc. So we're getting more and more warm, salty water going into the Arctic. In the Bering Sea, because there's a lot less sea ice, the ocean primary productivity level is enormous. So this is phytoplankton, 500% higher than normal levels. And that's linked to the record low sea ice extent in this region. So there was basically no ice there for the entire 2017-2018 season. And therefore, the light could just penetrate down and the phytoplankton could bloom because there's lots of nutrients up in the Arctic. And also, there's more and more nutrients being brought in off the land from the runoff. The warming Arctic Ocean, ocean conditions are causing also these harmful, toxic algal blooms that are then threatening food sources in the Arctic. And also, microplastic contamination is on the rise in the Arctic. The concentration of microplastics is higher in the Arctic than just about any other ocean. And, you know, why is this the case? Well, the microplastics can accumulate on the ice, and they've done this over many, many, many years. They get frozen into the ice, they get trapped there. All of the um, ocean circulation are going up into the Arctic. These things float. So the, the uh, thermohaline circulation, those currents basically carry the um, plastic on the surface up and then the currents descend to the bottom of the seafloor, but the plastic floats, a lot of it just stays at the surface, ingested by seabirds and marine life, um, and they, therefore it, it gets concentrated. Okay, now this report, so those are some of the, the summaries, um, and I'm just going to talk quickly about the table of contents, because these are some of the topics I'm going to talk about in detail. So next video, surface air temperature, terrestrial snow cover is, is vital. And people don't talk about it that much, so I'll do a whole separate video on that. Greenland ice sheet, of course, is now exposed. It's going to be, the, you know, once we have a blue ocean event, it'll be the only cold area up in the Arctic. And I've talked about how it'll be the center of cold. So I would expect that the center of rotation of the jet streams, rather than circling the North Pole, as they presently do, offset towards Greenland a bit, they will circle Greenland. So I talked about a 17 degree shift of the center of rotation of the jet stream. So therefore, you know, if you shift everything 17 degrees down, then North America is hugely affected, of course. You know, we can get these extremely cold uh, winters in eastern North America, you know, and, and a tale of two continents, if you like warm and hot in western North America and very, very cold in eastern North America. You know, um, sea ice is rapidly going. I still fully expect that we'll have a blue ocean event within the next four or five years. Sea surface temperatures, of course, with no ice. You know, ice is what keeps the temperature in the north. Ice is cold. Ice is the refrigerator. And when there's no ice, then temperatures can skyrocket. The ocean Atlantic Arctic Ocean primary productivity, of course, changes completely because there's much less ice, tundra greenness, river discharge, lake ice, the uh, caribou, there's all kinds of different things going on. So I'm going to have a whole series of videos on, on different things that are, that are happening there. Okay, so um, I'm going to end this video off. And I just wanted to Again, say, you know, this report came out recently. We know that the Arctic is changing. So now I'm going to go into the details of, you know, how it's actually changing. And remember, what happens in the Arctic doesn't stay in the Arctic. It's not like Las Vegas. What happens in the Arctic has global influence. It affects circulation of air and, air and water over the entire planet.